Yeah, but I want to talk about Get Back, the Beatles documentary, because you mentioned it last week. Did I ever tell you the story of the time that I spoke to Peter Jackson? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. How so, this, how's this has been an oversight? Well, the year was 1982. Cast yourself back to the early 90s. And uh, I used to go regularly to the Toronto International Film Festival. And this is before Peter Jackson was famous, but I've been following his career since his first feature film. And of course, he's known mostly for directing the Lord of the Rings trilogy and now the Beatles documentary. But I saw his very first film on like a bootleg VHS. Called, it was called Bad Taste. And my friend Bruce had a copy of it. So I was following his career right from the very beginning. And so in 1992, he had a feature film out called Brain Dead which was later retitled as Dead Alive. So it's one of his early features. It's a big splatter movie. Like it's like these sort of like, it's like a zombie kind of movie. It's sort of a horror comedy, splatter comedy. And so 1992, it played at the Toronto Film Festival at Midnight Madness, which is, they have these midnight screenings of usually like horror films, splatter films, you know, yeah, the right. sort of the weird stuff, right? Yeah. So I went to this midnight screening at the Bloor Cinema for Brain Dead, it was one of the best screenings I've ever been to in my life. That got a standing ovation at the end because it was like the perfect Midnight Madness film. Like it's just this crazy zombie movie. It's got the most blood you've probably ever seen in a movie. It's a lot of fun. I really like it, and it, it made me a Peter Jackson fan. Um, you know, very much from that day. What but year anyway, was it so, again? What's that? What year was it again? 1992. Really? Yeah. So it was his like. Third feature film, second so or third feature film. So how old was he then? Film. Well, he's around our age. Okay, so... Okay. Yeah, pretty young. But he started out, his first movie, Bad Taste, he had made it on weekends with his friends, like when he was in his early 20s. And uh, that one's kind of fun too. It's, it's not great, but it sort of showed early promise. It's this right. weird movie about aliens that uh, come and disguise themselves as New Zealand farmers. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But anyway, so I go to the screening of Brain Dead in 1992. It brings the house down. It's just a killer screening. It's so fantastic. And Peter Jackson is there to introduce it. And he does a Q&A after the film. And the two things I remember from the Q&A, he explained that the blood was made with Canadian maple syrup, which we, he was very <laughs> excited to tell the audience in Canada. They had enough money that they could import hundreds, perhaps thousands of gallons of Canadian maple syrup Why? to use as the I base for the corn blood. syrup for that, which would be a lot They thought it was, it was just the best. They tested many things, and the Canadian maple syrup had the best consistency. And, of course, you add red dye and, you know, other stuff. Yeah. So they had enough money to import all this maple syrup, but they didn't have enough money to shoot it on 35 millimeter, which you would normally shoot a movie on. So yeah. they shot it on 16 millimeter. He explains this in the Q&A, and then they blew it up to 35 millimeter. And I was quite surprised because it looked really good. Like normally you take a, quite a hit in quality if you shoot it on 16 and blow it up to 35. So the Q&A finishes, and I decide to go down and see if I can talk to him about it. And he was still there kind of at the front of the auditorium. And... Uh, you know, uh, he, he was sort of surrounded by other film nerds. Like I wasn't the only one that wanted to talk to him. Uh, so I managed to get in this ass. circle of film nerds uh, talking to Peter Jackson. So I wanted to ask him, was it regular 16 millimeter or super 16? There's sort of two different flavors of it. Super 16 is a little bit better, a little bit bigger, a little bit higher quality. Yeah. But he said, no, no, it was regular 16 millimeter, which I was quite surprised because it like the quality was quite good. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's weird. Like, why does it look so good? And he said, well, there are these new 35 millimeter uh, interpositive stocks. And that's what they used in the optical printer to blow it up. And, and that's why it looks so good. Like these intermediate stocks had gotten better. And I said, wow, that's amazing. That's a great story. So here we are. It's 2021. Peter Jackson yes. has now directed Get Back, this eight, nine hour Beatles documentary. And the original right. source for all this stuff is 60, millimeter. 60 hours of 16 millimeter film that they shot in 1969. So yeah, the problem with 16 millimeter, it can be quite grainy. It's not, you know, uh, as professional. And in fact, uh, Paul McCartney, somewhere in the film itself says, oh, we should have shot this on 35 millimeter. Yeah because they had planned to do it as a television film, but halfway through they changed their minds and decided it was going to be a feature documentary that was released in theater. So yeah, that's funny because there is a discussion about it in the movie where Paul McCartney says, yeah. oh, we should have shot this on 35 millimeter. Yeah. So, um, do a Paul McCartney impression. <laughs> I no, I that. don't. 
Are you anyway, sure you're not on point, black pills? <laughs> the point I'm getting around to, and I'm kind of alarmed how much we talk about film grain on this podcast. Yes. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> Maybe it should not... be a spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a whole podcast about film grain. Anyway, so the, the thing you do now in 2021 with 16 millimeter footage, if you want to clean it up, is you scan it into the computer and there's various software that can do noise reduction and can, you know, get rid of like dust and scratches and stuff. The audio restoration they did was quite amazing. They used machine learning apparently to mm -hmm. clean up the audio and be able to sort of, because you commented last week how good the audio sounds. It's super Yeah, clear, they strummed right? over because they didn't want the mics to pick them up talking, so they would strum <laughs> yeah. their instruments over it. So Peter Jackson took those instruments out or at least reduced them so you could hear them. Yeah, they used machine learning because the guitar and the voice were on the same track and you can't normally separate those yeah. if they're on the same track, but with this new machine learning software. So, but anyway, on the picture side, they're using this grain reduction software and I just think they did it wrong. Like it's just too severe. And you mentioned that a yeah. bit last week too. I, I tried watching it on my 120 inch projection screen. That's not the way to do it now. And all I could see were all these weird little things going yeah. on in the frame. Like somebody walks past something in the background and then the outline of their head starts to get fuzzy because the, the software gets confused right. about what's the background and what's, what's the person. And the, about 90 minutes into part two, there's a shot of John Lennon's guitar. Mm -hmm. And the strings of the guitar are completely missing. Like, they're yeah. gone. Like, they've been erased by the software. They, sorry, they were originally going to release this as a feature film that was two and a half hours or something. Uh, my thought now that you say this is that it wouldn't have worked. Not if they film. did it this way. But I think they could have dialed back the software. And because you could do it, like, they tried to get rid of all the grain, which I think is a, a fool's errand. Like, that 16 millimeter would have been quite grainy. So right. as soon as you start trying to get rid of all the grain, it just looks weird and plastic. Their hair sometimes looked like a like an anime drawing. Like it, you could see the outlines of certain clumps of hair. Just, you mm -hmm. know, it looked weird. So as far as I'm concerned, they, they screwed up the picture. And yeah, I posted on Twitter a picture of that guitar, if you're interested in looking at it. About 90 minutes into that. part two, um, I, I grabbed a still frame of, of John Lennon's guitar and he's, he's picking at the middle strings. So the strings aren't even moving. Like the top and bottom yeah. strings are not even moving, but they're invisible. They've been erased by the software. So, you know, uh, it was a fascinating thing to watch, but I have some complaints 